Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Inga Cotton. I'm the founder and executive director of San Antonio Charter Moms, and this is Charter Moms Chats. And uh, we're doing our <laughs> we're doing our um, charter a summer of learning. And every day we're featuring a different uh, learning activity that you can do with your kids that is uh, pandemic safe, <laughs> because it's and it's good to you know keep your spirits up by still learning. But it doesn't have to be just sitting with a workbook. You know, it should be like you know lots of different things. And I find that having new things to look forward to and new things to try, um, it keeps me energized. I hope it does that for you too. So uh, today we have a guest, we have um, Barry Brake, um, who's a composer. <laughs> and our daughters have been friends since kindergarten. So uh, so <laughs> that's how I was able to twist Barry's arm into doing this. Um, so he wrote a, a post about jazz. And uh, so in, in real life, he is a composer. He's a member of the jazz protagonist. And uh, he also is a uh, part of the team at KPAC, which is part of Texas Public Radio, and hosts the Classical Connections show on weekday afternoons. Wait, is it one to three p.m.? One to three p.m. One and to three p.m. Okay. The show is Tuesday nights at nine p.m. The Protagonist Jazz Party. Ah, Protagonist Jazz Party Tuesdays at nine p.m. Got on it. KPAC. Okay. But, okay. And um, oh, so by the way, because Barry is a musician, we are pre-recording this because nine a.m. is not. In his waking hours, so it's <laughs> my nine a.m. Exactly right. It's not, it feels like nine a.m. to him. So <laughs> that we're just we're just gonna roll with that, right? Um, so, but I'll be following along with the stream and and answer your comments and stuff. So um, yeah, but so excited to premiere this video. Um, okay, so um, the link to the post is in the description. So I encourage everybody to go visit. And um, so I guess um, so I left this kind of open ended to Barry. But Barry, tell me why like jazz summer. America. Okay, yeah, how does it all go exactly. together? Yeah, exactly. Jazz is, uh, well, as I said, like blue jeans, jazz is America's great gift to the world. And, uh, and like blue jeans, it's something that um, doesn't arise from powdered wigs and expert uh, people who have degrees. You know, it rose up in jazz clubs and it rose up from the streets and from the people and, and uh, especially from oppressed people, mainly African-Americans and from a whole little demotic styles of music. And uh, and this great land was just fertile soil for this amazing music, and it's America's uh, music. And here's the interesting thing about it. This is a little extra. Uh, can I go off on a tangent? Absolutely. That's the joy okay. of, well, of doing yeah, this. This is the extra part. part. Yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. I, I love listening to classical music. I love all different kinds of music. <clears throat> When you go to a pop show, when you go to see Journey in concert, you expect them to play Don't Stop Believing," And you expect it to be You want it to sound like it sounds. Right. When you hear straight, you want it to sound like it's supposed to sound. When you go to hear Beethoven, you expect them to play the exact notes that Beethoven wrote for you to play. And the, the key is you like the different interpretations of it. You may take a slower or faster tempo slightly, but it's never going to be crazy, right? Well, in jazz, you take the song that's been given to you and you kind of become the composer and you make it your very own. So every single time you hear Dave Brubeck play Take Five, it's gonna sound completely different. He'll take a whole different tempo, a whole different feel. Sometimes he'll give it a little cha-cha kind of thing. It's, and so, <clears throat> Furthermore, not only is every player the composer, but when you get the sax player up there composing his or her own part, then you've got the other musicians there listening and responding, and they're actually composing the background spot. So if I start going, then the other person will start doing something very different than if I go, bah, 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 right? They'll, they adapt to me and listen and respond and create the setting, even though they're in the background and I'm in the foreground and vice versa which means that jazz is the music of democracy. Ah. It's a democratic thing where it's, it's a picture of who and what we can be, where the voice of the individual comes forth and each person puts his or her own stamp on the message that's being given and everyone else listens and responds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's, not the, it's not the oh, cheery yeah. theme of the score it's exactly <laughs> it's a right a point. right 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 okay okay so there you go. Okay, I, need, I need to go read some de tocqueville now i feel very inspired right. so, okay. <laughs> exactly alexis de tocqueville. <laughs> hey, and you gotta say like for better and for worse he predicted it all he did <laughs> he predicted 2020 <laughs> he did oh the tangent but um so my kids and i we've been reading uh max brooks's world war z oh oh he, how he, 
he predicted it all. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's way better. It's way better than the movie. The movie was, was fine, but like the book yeah. is like uncannily predictive. Yeah. Of, yeah, I've heard. Yeah. I've heard it's like more. It's like more political than the movie. Very, like, yeah. yeah, very, very. Yeah, and, and it would make a good companion to. I don't know. We might do Tokyo next for our family book club. I don't know, but the fact that this book has zombies is like that's a real draw. So. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you that somewhere on the internet there is a version of uh, Tocqueville's Democracy in America with zombies. It's, our, it's been done. There's a whole website, guaranteed. Wait for oh, that if it doesn't exist, it needs to. It needs to. Yeah. You hear yeah. me on the internet? Go on. Somebody write a treatment, please. Like this needs to happen. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So um, okay. Well, so okay. So what do you think about the premise of like this, like summer charter, a summer of learning, right? This because okay. I'm just I'm thinking if people are cooped up and they're bored, right? But you want hope and optimism, then like learning something new and trying something new, right? It's a yeah. exactly. And okay. you know, summer is the great thing for it because like I have all these people. I don't know if uh, your mileage may vary here. But like lots of people in my life who don't have kids have been saying, here's a pi big pile of stuff that you, your kids can be doing uh, while, since they're so bored during COVID season. I'm like, are you kidding? We've got eight hours of schoolwork every day, man. You know, I mean, they're having to do all this, the projects. It doesn't end. Though summer, finally, there's some free time and there's some good stuff. And, and um, you know, it's just a, we're, we're in a season where it's especially going to be the resources of families, I think, are going to be um, especially important, and that's a super good thing because you may be able to get some some cool discovery with your kid that you might not have gotten otherwise. Take advantage yeah. of. Yeah, and it, what's wonderful about the resources you found? Okay, yes, I I have felt I have felt overwhelmed. I mean, I mean, I'm somebody who likes taking information, but I felt have felt overwhelmed and kind of guilty that I'm not trying all these things with my kids, and so. Part of part of what, what like our team at the blog is trying to do over the summer is like okay it's just it's just try one new thing today okay you don't have to commit to the whole right. universe of virtual tours or language apps or whatever it's like just try right. this one thing today and we right. promise we have broken it yeah. down to be simple and cheap and like you have permission to do it like the easy way <laughs> like yeah and you have permission to do it your way yes right this is just a launching off point so. And, and well, you know, something I mean, if this turns you on to like, I, I didn't suggest uh, Sergio Mendez and Brazil 66, but man, if your toddler prefers Brazil 66, which your toddler may do it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, I, these things are all findable on YouTube, right? I mean, they're all pretty, yeah. yeah. All like, Super. I tried to keep it like really in the ballpark and, and like it's all kind of popular stuff. If you can't find it here, you can find it there. It's all stuff that you can download easily and make part of your library. It's all stuff you can see videos of and do some live stuff. I, I've specified a lot of times, you know, I, I say like check out the original recording because that's the iconic one. And but then again, if you really want to find out a little more about jazz, get to know the iconic original recording and then go to listen to what other people have done with it and listen to what that same performer does live in concert. And right, also right. great, you know, and it really gets you to especially if there's video. I have found that that a lot of people's feelings about jazz being complex and noisy and not too relatable come from listening to it and you just hear this stuff you can't and if you right. watch it happening in front of yeah. you where you can see them, like catch each other's mm -hmm. eye and go like respond to each other and it's like you see it all happening then suddenly you think oh i get it these people right. are really just like making all this stuff up and playing and <laughs> you know yeah it's good yeah yeah and there, to me there's something about the way it's it's spaced out right and you hear things coming from different parts of the stage and yeah right. so yeah someday we will be able to hear live jazz again right it's um true. Oh, but okay, by I'm the way, if i may plug uh the jazz yes. protagonist have uh some things on our website that have been live covid season concerts where we've gotten together and we've stayed several feet apart outside outdoors and like done concerts outside people's windows and stuff just to kind of like serenade the neighborhood and cool stuff like that. So you can get all that video uh, and it's a variable uh, video quality, but you'll be able to see. It. And so it's fun to watch us interact with each other and have fun. And yeah. um, and by the way, I would be remiss not to mention Doc Watkins right, and Jack. Right. They've done such a terrific job of keeping things uh, on. They've got lots and lots of streaming. You can check it out. It's almost like being there. 
Yeah, and he like, he brings on guests. And he's <laughs> Taka says he's just really funny. I mean, right? right so, oh, I mean, he'll 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 like burn up the keyboard on you know, and then and then he like takes his break and he's like you know talking trash with some guy from Australia, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, Jazz Texas. If, if y'all haven't been, it's this club in the it's in the basement underneath the food hall at the Pearl, um, and it's, it's just speakeasy. gorgeous inside. Yeah, yeah, speakeasy. Yeah, and so when when it's safe to gather again, that is a that is like a must visit. I think sanitary experience. But like getting to like, I mean, popping up the live stream and like you know my kids are kind of gathering around. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I have not. I have not taken my kids to Jazz Texas. It's it's a more of an adult you know, environment. So, yeah. so for them to be yeah. able to hear the music um, on the live stream is really cool. And and they're, cool. and they're archived on the site. Yeah. 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 That's, oh, well, I guess while we're talking about locals, okay, there were a couple other, um, let's see, Ron Wilkins, um, trombonist yeah. that you mentioned in the, in the post. So, and he survived yeah. COVID, right? He, he is surviving and he's gonna, he's made of uh, stronger stuff than, uh, than you might think, man. He is just dope. He has gone, wow. he has been hit with one dang thing after another in this life. But um, a terrific player, tons and tons of showbiz and lots and lots of fun to watch. Kids will love watching him. He, he's, he's relatable and he's one of those who, who takes, he carries you along with the language of jazz. And so you never feel like it's, it's you know, a lot of jazz feels like it's being made by jazz musicians for the entertainment of other jazz musicians. Right. <laughs> you know right. I mean? It's like, and are you yeah. smart enough to listen to this? Yeah. Are you yeah, smart yeah. enough? Right. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna we're gonna yeah, keep yeah, yeah, changing yeah. the signatures on you until we lose yeah, you. Exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. So meanwhile there's the like Duke Ellingtons and Count Basies of the world who just want to put on a show. And so right. that's, that's where I want to, that's where I live. And, and, and that's definitely where Ron Wilkins lives. And we also mentioned Morris Nelms, uh, yeah. jazz professor and just great player. So much fun to watch. He looks like he might be Santa Claus in the off hours. <laughs> you get to see what somebody who I'm not going to say whether he is or not could be the real Santa Claus. Uh, he's a fantastic jazz player. And, and uh, once again, it's just a master. All these people that I'm talking about, are masters of the craft and they they wear it lightly they take this the, they take jazz seriously and they don't take themselves too seriously and it's just tons and tons of fun to watch J jazz is just so much fun to get into and if you and your family haven't gotten into jazz it's super duper fun to do uh it, it'll be something to listen to that's uh they, they've done all this kind of research that says that when you have the music on that's just this kind of hypnotic beat that your eyes begin to glaze over and when you have something that's going on that has something of interest even a kid who's like a baby will be sitting in the back seat of your car and, and they'll like constantly be kind of perking up and ooh that's different ooh that's what's happening and so it engages right. your brain jazz makes you smarter <laughs> but no, so, it has these it has these patterns that right. It's not predictable. Yeah. It's not right. It, it it keeps it keeps challenging um, yeah. your brain in in unexpected ways, and it, it yeah, never yeah. gets boring. I'm hoping so, it'll yeah. make me smarter. That hasn't happened yet. But, <laughs> yeah. And then oh, there were a few other like um, YouTube channels in particular you mentioned. So one was Postmodern Jukebox. Yeah. So we, we actually we got to we got to see their show at the Tobin Center. Oh last man, here. Totally <laughs> fantastic. The tap dancing. I mean, everything, everything. Once again, the 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 showbiz. They they know yeah. how to do. Yeah. Well, the, and, and if you, if y'all don't know about post, um, PMJ, the the shtick is that they take like like Lady Gaga songs or like pop music from like very oh. re, very recent pop songs, and then they'll like throw it back to like swing uh, yeah. styling. Yeah, and make it into a jazz journey. And and you know, this is something that's very much in the tradition of jazz. You know, you look, you get a Miles Davis album from the 1950s and it'll have some original songs on it and some kind of thorny stuff, but then it'll have Someday My Prince Will Come from Snow White. You know, it'll have like the right. latest Broadway, right. thing, like this is big Broadway hit. They'll have something the equivalent of, you know, from Hamilton or from Dear Evan Hansen or what, something like that. And right, they'll right. play it, but they'll, if they don't just replicate the whole jazz journey and stretch it out and do all this amazing stuff. They take the familiar, and make it their, they put their stamp on it. Right. Uh, so this is exactly what Postmodern Jukebox is doing. They take, uh, uh, and it's so much fun if you know the song, especially because look, <laughs> these people back in the 50s and 60s, they knew the song that was happening. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, so they can like, oh, I recognize that song. And then they could hear what the person was doing with it. And it didn't just sound like a stream of notes all happened. Right, right, right. right. And so, it's, it, it's, it, it, because having that familiarity, I think in some ways, like a modern listener experiencing postmodern jukebox is a more similar experience to like someone in the 50s hearing Miles Davis riff right. on a Broadway song because they right. it, it assumed knowledge, right? I, this is like, okay, tangent. Like, you know, I get, yeah. I get, I go off on, like for kids to like, it's important for kids to have cultural literacy, right? Like, yeah. like you yeah. can't really measure reading comprehension unless you have some base knowledge of the subject matter, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Or it's like, um, so yeah, like if you gave me a reading comprehension test about baseball, I would probably flunk, right? But if you give it to me about, you know, um, I don't know, like classic video games, I might do pretty well, well right? But you because you've got to have that knowledge, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. knowledge is yeah. knowledge is key. Yeah. Well, and so, like, that's the thing, man. And so you get like uh, somebody. Well, Morris does this quite a bit. Uh, Ron Wilkins will do this, where he'll quote, um, he'll be playing along, but playing his solo, and then he'll you'll realize that this is a quote from a video game theme song. You know, from, <laughs> right? There's a little okay. ancient Mario there. <laughs> right, exactly, and and so it's like, and so there's people in the audience who don't know it, and it just sounds like notes to them. But the, if you're sitting there and you go, ah, uh, you know, and you recognize it, I know what you did there, right? Right. Right, I love it. <laughs> Good so stuff. jazz musicians are the the best jazz musicians have always been listening to what everyone's saying and singing and playing in the culture and and so you know a lot of the musicians that are that are in the top one hundred today, Billboard top forty, whatever you want to say, like there's some terrific music there and some great melodies yeah. there. Yeah, that make the protagonists often will play songs that are just like from you know Justin Bieber and for so I mean this. I know, is right? Like, these yeah. songs are manufactured to be catchy, great little compositions. Most of them are read by professional songwriters. This isn't just some kid strumming a guitar. I mean, it's like they're professional yeah. songwriters who are making great music that's meant to appeal to millions. And so you take it, and it turns out that a lot of it is structured very similarly to what, uh, you know, Porter, Por Cole Porter and George Gershwin right. and others were doing. So right. lots of the American Songbook is not closed. That's right. <laughs> it just it just it just has a little more trouble in it for the earbuds, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Wait, just on on a, uh, a side note, have you seen? I forget the name of them, but they do. They take modern songs from like today's thing, and they put it into the language of the nineteen eighties pop with like lots of synthesizer and. and oh and, no way. And, and so, and what it makes you realize is that the art of songwriting hasn't really changed that much. It's just the arrangement. It's just the setting that right, changes. Right, right, right. And so it's the same thing with jazz. You, you take the setting and you make it your own kind of thing. So I, I love the fact that these guys, uh, Dirty Loops is the other group that does tons of Now, Dirty Loops is a little more stuff that's for the benefit of other jazz musicians. It's a little more like, look how fancy we are. But <laughs> you can't argue with them. And there's so, they're so, dang good man they're just it's just fantastic <laughs> musician if you have a kid who's learning to play an instrument to watch some of this stuff and just like let yourself be blown away and go like how did they do that and you know the answer is well after the first thousand hours of practice you'll be able to do very well and then after ten thousand hours then you'll do really really well <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, that goes back. That was something we talked about I think, before we went on the air. It's like I'm a big believer in listen to your kids, find out what they're passionate about, you know, steer them in that direction, give them the tools they need. Um, but if 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 somebody's going to put in a thousand hours or ten thousand hours on something, it better be something they're passionate about. It should not yeah. be something that they hate, right? Because like, I've, I've, have you ever heard Andre Agassi talk about like how much he hated tennis when he was like 16, and his dad made him oh, drop no. out of school? And yeah, did you know that yeah. Andre Agassi? helps he helps build charter school buildings now like the kip building downtown like he helped he like his he used his fame and his philanthropy to get that campus built and he does it in las vegas he does it in florida that's his passion yeah because he was forced to drop oh. out of school and practice tennis all the time and i think it just breaks my heart because and like and he was so good at it but oh my god yeah so if somebody's gonna put yeah. in ten thousand hours like everybody should find the thing that they're passionate about and get that good at it but you just hope it's something that they that they love, right? And so, like, yeah. like yeah. you talk about like teenagers, like you know, get them to try this stuff, right? Yeah. And if they if they are enjoying it and they practice, then yeah, they love it. Right, right. And and in today's world, so much more than even in yesterday's world. I mean, and I mean, 
yesterday's world, you just basically had to be a farmer if your father or mother was a farmer. I mean, oh, yeah. just, but, let's, you know. let's be honest, like for all the people who claim they had like fancy ancestors, no, 99% of them were farmers. farmers. <laughs> I can't They're all farmers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> for 14 out of like, uh, what, 30 out of your 32 great, great grandparents were farmers. We'll say yeah. that. Yeah. But uh, well, and, and but so in today's world, you know, like we have we have a good friend. This is this Catherine's uh, family friend that she grew up with. And, you know, their parents are always saying, you should, you know, you should do this. You should do this. You should do that. And they were just playing video games. Stop just playing video game. Get out of the basement. And now, you know, they're video game designers. And I mean, you know. <laughs> That you've heard a lot of their video games. They're, they're, you know, they have nothing to worry about ever again financially. <laughs> well, and like my son has told me he wants to be a YouTuber who reviews video games. And, and I'm like, YouTubing, that's not a job. And I'm like, oh, wait, what what am I doing right now? <laughs> what you're doing right now. And we, we just, um, we have a, a good friend whose 13 year old daughter is a YouTuber. And she, is complaining now that she only makes nine thousand dollars a month, down from twelve thousand dollars a month at her peak a couple of years ago. They changed the rules on YouTube, so do the math. Like she's making more money than a lot of firefighters and school teachers. <laughs> you know, so yeah, college paid is, for, folks. It is a real job, and like what I do is a job that. Uh -huh. Like I couldn't even conceive of that. Like when I was in high school, that that was a job. So right. So but like do and like yeah. When I thought I should go to law school, I you know it wasn't to be a lawyer, but it was to learn about policy and persuasive arguments and absolutely. So, so there you go. Right. I was on and the right track. Yeah. Put you in good stead, right? You know. Yeah. And, and so, you know we live in. I, I I love to tell my daughters. You know we we live in a rich and free land, uh, a, a fat land, so to speak, where, you know, somebody like me, I, I make music for a living. Literally, I make music for a living and I can make a pretty good almost living doing that. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that doesn't happen in 12th century Flanders, you know, <laughs> that happens in 21st century America where you can really kind of make things happen. And fortunately, what I do uh, is the, the live jazz has taken a great big hit uh, during the uh, coronavirus season. But a lot of the other stuff that I do, studio work and arranging and production and all that kind of stuff uh, seems to have been fairly impervious to that, so. Yeah, well, I think I, it's, it's important to, the, the, the arts are, are part of what's keeping people sane, right? When everyone's at home watching, you know, binge watching <laughs> videos or listening to audio books, right? Like, I mean, yeah. you, you've recorded audio books before, right? You've done oh, yeah. 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 Done the voiceover work. That's sound. <laughs> <laughs> so it helps keep people entertained, right? So, um, <laughs> sure. Okay, so I want to. One thing I want to touch on is the fact that, um, like, part of our, our template for these posts was to break it down. Like, how, like, how do you tailor it for young children? How do you tailor it for like middle grades? And how? Yeah. And what about the teenagers? So, so can you kind of comment on? Although I noticed that take five is in all three categories, but it's just well, they just you introduce it differently, right? Yeah, you ask them different really questions about it. Right. The, my, my, my thinking here was I, I tried two or three different things. And what seemed to me the best was if you've got a family, you, a, everyone in your family can kind of be listening to the same stuff and be doing different things with it. So it's the same one o'clock jump and Cape Verde and blues and take five are all three. Right. Right. Of the the oh, thing yeah. for preschool and grade school and teens and others. It's just that they're listening to different stuff because this stuff appeals on an elemental level, but it will reward the deepest inquiry and it's bottomless, right? And so, uh, you know, kids can kind of bounce around and dance around to it. All the stuff that I chose was stuff that's easy to bounce around to and dance around to, which of course is jazz. That's jazz's first entry into the world, right? It's right. just stuff to dance. bounce around to. Yeah. And uh, and so as uh, as a grade schooler kind of enters into the the entering into a world a different way, you can kind of listen to what what makes this music the way it is. Can you hear the different parts? Can you hear the difference between what the bass player is doing and what the drummer is doing? Can you hear the part that's going boom 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 underneath the whole thing? And that's called a walking bass. And can you hear how it's why it's called a walking bass? And there's all sorts of just interesting stuff that you can kind of you know, bring your kids out. You can, uh, with Dave Rubeck's take five, you know, it's got that bump. Dun, 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 dun. 
and he keeps this going the entire time, the entire time, with, without ever changing. But it's, so it's like left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So it's easy to do, but it's complex in that it's not the typical four on the floor ding, 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 that you're used to hearing in jazz right. or in a lot of other music where there's lots of fours, right? We count mm -hmm. to two, we count to four, we have heartbeats. But so this, this five, four is just kind of an interesting little thing. And so you get your, if you get a grade school kid to sort of wrap your mind around it. It's really fun to do. And then as teenagers, uh, teens can begin to listen to other elements of it and other things. They can begin to get into the kind of the social background of it. Um, right, right. The um, if you you know if you watch the Ken Burns special on jazz, oh. you know, jazz. I mean, it could have just been called race, and it would have been you wouldn't have had to change much about it, right? So they're like right, the right. politics of jazz are interesting for a kid to get into, uh, as well as just a lot of the musicological stuff. The more if you're right. especially getting a kid who's studying piano or drums or bass or guitar or fiddle or whatever, you're the playing a musical instrument, you can say like, I bet you can play that. There's a, there's easy little stuff in there that you can hear, like you can hear the clarinet player instead of ba, 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 it's like, ba, ba, what? It's like, try to do that. Try to get uh, off board sounds, things that the instrument wasn't designed to do that jazzers do and all sorts of interesting little ways that you can kind of approach the music, the music is just like this wonderful thing you can kind of look at from any angle. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. I think if anybody who listened to that and doesn't just want to just go jump on like YouTube or a streaming service and start playing jazz oh. right now, then they have a heart of stone. So <laughs> 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 that, is, that is very. I think for me, it was the uh, the Smithsonian Jazz Collection on CD yeah. that I found at the college library. Ever so oh. had the. The Coates Library at Trinity has like had the yeah, the, and that's I just kept getting checking out more discs, right? And like and, right, and, so, right, and right. like especially like the like the ragtime stuff or like the blues stuff from the twenties. You're like, that's where that comes from. Yeah, wow. no, no. like yeah, yeah. A lot of Delta blues, and here's just an let's just mentioning the the blues. A lot of the Delta blues that you hear, especially in that the the Smithsonian collection and some of the other stuff, you can easily get the stuff on on YouTube too. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the players were playing on the same kind of guitar that they had gotten ah. from the Sears Roebuck catalog because it wasn't a store. And so they didn't care whether you were black or white. So black wow. people could wow. order, if you're African American, you can order from Sears Roebuck. And so you can get their little $12 guitar. And so the Delta Blues, you know, and a lot of the guitar based blues was born out of this economic thing that was made possible by the modern day equivalent, wow. you know? Yeah, yeah, wow, it was like, like the Green Book, it's like you had to find out like ways for, you know, black people to get to their goal, but right. in a safe way in the Jim Crow right. era, when there were all right. these ridiculous barriers to them getting what they need. Wow, that's really cool. I was yeah. like, okay, and then the, so also something from that era, right? There's a San Antonio connection, right? It was at the, the Gunter Hotel, right? There were some famous recordings oh, made. Yeah. Right, yeah. but I'm, I'm blanking it. Was it wait, Joe Johnson? What, what? Howard Johnson. Howard. Okay, and it was right in one of the hotel rooms, and yeah, and he's he's the guy who supposedly made a deal with the devil, right, for guitar yeah. playing. <laughs> That's the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so a little, a little like local local lore, right? So uh, yeah, yeah. San Antonio is a jazz is a jazz city in its own way, right? So, oh yeah. yeah, San Antonio has got the greatest jazz scene. It's so you know the thing is like. <clears throat> Well, uh, we, the, the, I always like to say, like, all these people from these towns in America go off to New York City to try to make it big and what, make it rich in jazz, you know. But, okay, but, uh, you know, they, they, they try to do it. And, and, and if they would just stay home in Kansas right. City and San Diego and wherever, then you'd have these thriving jazz scenes there. And essentially, that is what has happened in San Antonio. You've got this thriving jazz scene. I mean, there are 20, or 30 people I know who are making their living doing nothing but jazz. And then probably another 150 like me who are making their living doing other stuff, including jazz as full-time musicians, living, feeding a family on music. And, um, you know, that's, it's amazing. And, and, and I hope and, and it stays that way. As someone who appreciates jazz, like it's fun for me to go to like you know Rosella at the Rand or something, and it's like it's brunch and 
it's a really great Latin jazz, right? And um, De Leon. Or like, yeah, and, or like the, at the at the Thank at the you. witty, like um, you know, like when when we can gather again, right? They'll have like outdoor concerts like right there yeah. on the river in that sort of amphitheater behind the where they have the Texas History Center. I mean Sunday Jazz just, at the Witty. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And that one's kid friendly. I mean I've been taking my kids there since they were preschoolers oh. because well, during you know, the day. Yeah, it's daytime, right? And they can spread out. They can, yeah. you know, my son would he'd want he'd get he would find the sweet spot where like he could wander off far enough to where it wasn't overstimulating to him. Right. Um right. you know, so he could like enjoy the jazz but not get overwhelmed by the noise and stuff. That's so, the whole thing. I mean, you, yeah. yeah, if you have to like do a handstand every couple of you know, you can't really be in a jazz club, but the these uh, outdoor concerts are good. Right, right. Like they're not, yeah, my kids are not jazz Texas ready yet, but you know, when they <laughs> when they get a little older, they can <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But they're but but see, but like I think I think hearing it, like hearing things like, you know, like the the, the walking bass or like hearing like the 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 five four signature, like, you know, it's good to like get get that in your brain so that um like when yeah. you do encounter jazz, like it's not just like, whoa, what's that? But it's like, ooh, cool, what's going on here? Let's right. listen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I warned you that I was going to ask kind of about like, like parenting philosophy, I guess. Like, so what's your advice or like, you know, families who are trying to get through pandemic parenting in the summer, <laughs> right? The packets are done, but um, you know, a lot of stuff is like stuff is still closed or, or I'm too chicken to go to some of the stuff that's reopening. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, <clears throat> I mean, the, the, here, here's the deal. Um, we're all going to have different answers to whatever the question of the day is what's the question is what's safe or what's a good thing to do or you know how best to have you to have, what what do you tell your kid about right. all this? Um, right. and uh, you know your answer is going to be different from mine please don't think of me as an idiot and i won't think of you as an idiot you probably have arrived at your philosophy for good reason my philosophy yeah. on on the whole thing about kids is man you know, the best possible thing that a kid can do is just to kind of get outside in the backyard and play with a piece of string and find some ants and, and you know, jump on the trampoline and, and walk up and down the neighborhood and, you know, that kind of stuff. And so now you can't uh, get very much in the vicinity of other people that much, but you can still do a whole lot of the outdoor stuff. And, yeah. you know, we're very much a um, through this season, before it gets too hot, we've been doing the whole mm -hmm. just like a little lemonade or something out on the back porch and the girls stay out a lot of the day. Um, and so that's the, you know, kind of life we live and we're fortunate to live in a place. Uh, most of the time they're during a normal time of life. Um, you know, we have, we live in the kind of neighborhood that has bookstores and cafes and parks and stuff like that. And we have allowed them to go further and further out as the years go and they can cross the street holding hands and do stuff. And so, we're giving them greater amounts of freedom uh, that that yeah. they can hold on to and have proven themselves worthy of, um, and uh, and we've got lots and lots of um, neighbors who are kind of upset about that, but we also have uh, neighbors who are for the most part just real. You know, it's like, oh, this is the way my neighborhood was when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. this is great, and yeah. so um, and so there's enough of that that's happening that's really fun and good. Um, I think you're right. You know, there's, there's some stuff that I make my kids do they, they, we got piano lessons, man. No, no two ways about it. Put in the time. Yep. You can piano yep. lessons. You know, look, Hey, I did softball. You know yep. what I'm saying? I can do softball. You can do piano lessons. Well, my kids are learning typing, right? It's like they, they want to be coders. They, right. They want to do computer programming. It's like, yeah. look, just learn touch typing. Just get it out of the way. Right. Yeah. It'll yeah, yeah, you well. yeah. Yeah. I guess that's something that uh, that my uh, nine year old has gotten um, okay at. We're gonna this. We're gonna start doing the little games and drills and stuff because she yeah. really. Wanted. We started off COVID season with pencil and paper and doing lots. That's what they responded to, and I think that works well in a lot of ways, especially for cursive writing. But yeah. as the week progressed, she wanted more and more and more to get online and do all the stuff, and so she got really conversant. It has helped her become more computer literate. So yes. there you go. Yes, I've seen that too. Play. It yeah. was been handed to you and, uh, you know, make it work. Make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much. This is, I think, will equip parents with like some inspiration, you know, some good advice and then they can take it and make it their own, right? They can find yeah, their own ways to enjoy jazz with their kids and, you know, try Love to be it. new today. So enjoy it. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Barry.
I'm, Thank you. I'm really proud to share this. Okay, I'll sign off.